All right, guys, what's happening? It is the 2nd of November already. Holy crap, two months till the end of the year. And, um, you know, let's go through some NFT stuff. There's obviously a lot has happened in the last two months. This weekend was also very exciting. So we have a lot to go through. Um, Smart Velo, which is a cryptocurrency exchange in Switzerland, one of the largest um, regulated cryptocurrency exchange, announced this uh, October 29th. So this is a few days ago. Um, some, something about having an NFT marketplace for real and intangible tokenized assets. Now the video or the GIF here shows kind of real physical pieces and digital physical pieces. So it's kind of like jewelry. Um, we know some of these art pieces, also like cars. So it seems they're having some sort of an NFT investment solution to them. Um, I read the article and it looks like uh, I, I read pretty much the same thing, right? So there's going to be some sort of an NFT way, maybe like you can own one of 10 NFTs that represent a really um, you know expensive car. And then if you own that NFT, you own part of that appreciation of that asset. Um, so it's kind of like backed by the asset. Now assets launched on Smart Velo can travel to any other DEX marketplace or wallet. So it can be taken to your MetaMask and you know you can do all those regular things like sell it on OpenSea, uh, maybe even take it into like virtual platforms. So like if you sell a Rolex, if you've got like one out of 10 NFTs in a Rolex watch, maybe you can take it to Decentraland and have that identified as an official kind of Rolex piece um, or NFT that represents that. Or you know you can take it to like Somnium Space, maybe the car, um, you can take it over there and drive it around. So it's kind of this nft thing is really really exciting and as people find new ways to to get them in other people's hands and new things we can do with nfts it's going to open up a lot more visual solutions i think all right so let's move on nifty gateway so the people drop very anticipated the artist people um quite popular on instagram you must have come across some of these artists at some stage i was looking through some of these and yeah some of these videos look very familiar so this piece sold on nifty gateway for a dollar each okay so there was like this kind of a, a really cool marketing move but like a you know, 100 of these were sold for a dollar each along with two one of one so addition one pieces meaning that there was only uh where are we yeah so there was only um so, so basically three different pieces were sold two of them were one of ones so there was only a single unique piece of that and both were purchased for sixty six thousand. 666 USD and 66 cents um, by uh, Pablo, which uh, which um, runs Mocha, which is Museum of Crypto Art. I'll show you that soon. But this is the piece. And it was kind of put triumphantly tweeted about it on Museum of Crypto Art. Got a ton of engagement. And uh, yeah, it's sitting very pretty at Somnium Space, which I'll go through. But along with those two pieces was this third one, like I said, that this specific one had a hundred different editions of it, right? And it was sold for a dollar each. So it kind of shows, um, it's a pretty cool concept. Politics is bullshit. Um, you can make of this whatever you want. But the very exciting and interesting thing for this is that it, although it was sold for a dollar on the primary market, you know, it, it was bought up within seconds, as you would think, um, probably some bots at work as well. But on the secondary market, prices went up pretty quickly. Within within the next hour or so, prices were over a thousand dollars, and now it's been I think about forty eight hours since the drop, and we've seen prices sell between two thousand dollars to six thousand dollars. And I think I don't know why we've seen some six thousand six hundred dollars. Some people are saying it's addition, so maybe like the lower mint warrants and higher number. But um, yeah, the latest one selling for two thousand five hundred dollars. So whoever bought it for a dollar got some insane ROI. Um, I missed the, the dollar drop, but I know that this is going to, I feel like this is going to be, be a big one because one, it has a great story to it. A hundred of these were sold for just a dollar each. Um, two, it's his first set of releases. And three, it's Beeple. So I'm pretty sure he's going to continue to do really cool work and drop his stuff on Nifty, um, on NFT. And I don't think like his future releases will, like, I feel like it's going to be very difficult for you to get in on any of these pieces anymore. And I feel like the entry price to get a part of Beeple's NFT, NFTs is going to be um, these. So these are, I feel, going to appreciate a little bit faster than the rest. 
just because maybe you're a mid-tier investor and you want a Beeple piece. Well, what's your option? Is your option to have a one of one which are probably going to be affordable for the average NFT investor? You know, $50,000 plus, maybe $30,000 plus. Or are you going to say, all right, screw it, let me just get one of these, which are still, it's still a great piece, but I'm saying that because there's multiple editions of it, it's a cheaper entry and it's a more affordable entry. So it's going to have more volume. I think there's a, some statistics here showing that, uh, showing the volume. So market stats, okay. Um, $90,000 on secondary market volume, 57 sales on secondary sales. Um, so I think 10% of these goes to people. So, you know, he's made $9,000 just from secondary sales. It's pretty cool. Um, so where was I going to go with this? I was going to show you guys the Somnium Space Gallery. So yeah, Mo Mocha picked up the piece and they have a gallery in Somnium Space, which is really, really cool. I don't know if you guys can hear this music, but, um, you know, it's a virtual gallery in VR and I think it really gives a use case for digital land because people are like, well, why do you want to buy digital land? Well, you can do a lot of things. And this is one of the reasons is you can actually have and display your art. It looks beautiful, to be honest. And um, you can display your art. And the cool thing is that you can get people buying and selling those. You, know, you can get people buying directly off those art pieces. So you can hold meetups, can have people running around your galleries. If they like a piece, they can buy it directly from you. Um, so there's a lot you can do with these digital lands or these, these lands that are, have blockchain support. So that's a, a cool use case. And I think we're going to see a lot more galleries in the virtual space because it makes sense, right? There's going to be investors that have such a big collection and want to display it. And you can't really display it in a physical world. So the digital world is a solution to that. You can display it digitally. You can have meetups, you can hold meetups to it. Uh, gallery conferences, meet the artist. You can do all the stuff you can do in the real world, but now in the digital space or blockchain integrated. So I think it's very exciting to see uh, Museum of Crypto Art leading the kind of leading the way in terms of what a virtual gallery can look like. And I've been inspired, so I'm probably going to make something, uh, you know, my own gallery at some stage. Um, we're going to rewind it back a little bit. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> So uh, Decentraland saw the end of its five day quest and there was a bunch of things to do. And one really cool thing that I like is you, there was like kind of like, there was this kind of museum shooter level game where you had to like beat these monsters and then go all the way up to fight a final boss. And it, it was really cool. It kind of gave me this sense of, um, you know, those MMOs all those games that you play with multiple people and you can take down a final boss and, and so, seeing something like this in Decentraland with like a HP bar at the top, well, it's, it's pretty exciting actually. It's like, I spent a good couple of hours in this whole quest, um, doing a bunch of different things. You can see all the people coming here, like uh, trying to beat this quest. So there's quite a lot of people here. And then you get a prize and you win an NFT, whatever it is. But I don't know, I just felt like this is the first time I've seen this in Decentraland, it just looks so different to what it could have been. Like I knew questing was going to be a thing and like games, we all knew kind of games would come to Decentraland, but to see it in action and to actually experience it and to see that we were there for a good hour or two and we we're talking to people and all kind of had fun. We all walked away with some wearables. And then after all that, they had this massive party um, with DJ Snake and the boss from that, that game with the quest. But yeah, DJ Lucy Snake kind of played it out. Um, and it was like this end, this Halloween party with like fireworks and kind of like, the, kind of like a little bit in, you know, showing, showcasing what it could be a year or two from now. So these digital worlds are only like eight months to maybe a year or two public. Uh, Decentralized specifically is like eight months, nine months public. So I reckon in a year or two, uh, especially when, once this is VR and um, there's going to be better quality graphics and all that kind of stuff, I think it's going to be pretty big. Like, I don't know. I just felt very, very different experiencing um, an MMO style game here that had a gun. Like for me, having a gun in here, which worked and I could shoot things, it was just really, really cool. So yeah, that was the event. I wish I had a video of this. I think I do have a video of this actually. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Um, yeah, here we go. I like dancing skeletons and 
pretty decent music. Nice track. Quite a lot of people around me. Yeah, there's all these kind of like little things that, that kind of made it fun and interactive. Somnium Space also had a party. Um, so another virtual party. In our town of Halloween. In this town. Don't we love it now? Everybody's waiting for the Which was so so many spaces in VR. <laughs> What's this guy doing? Okay, okay. <laughs> With a bit of fun there. And yeah, I don't know. Virtual virtual parties, virtual galleries, things are things are like I feel like you know, there was a concept of, yes, we are moving virtual, but this end of this year really seen a push for people spending time in virtual spaces, not just places like Somnium Space or Decentraland. It's just like, even you know, people are buying art, they're displaying it virtually, people are wearing wearables, NFTs or avatars and doing all this stuff. And I've also had some phone calls of, with people telling me, you know, they want to start some pretty big companies wanting to start a virtual presence and start to build some games and some experiences. So the push is here. And if the money and the funding and the, the kind of demand continues to have that sort of stuff, I think the next two to three years is going to be massive for this space. I think we're going to see a, a complete evolution of what blockchain means to people. Um, obviously, Bitcoin leading the way in terms of monetary value, but in terms of use case, visually, there's just so much to see, right? Uh, yeah, so we went through Mocha and now lastly, we're going to go through the Whale Vault uh, valuation. So Whale Shark Pro and East Community um, Whale is probably one of the strongest, largest communities of NFT people. Um, but Whale Shark Pro purchases NFTs and puts it in a vault, which um, you can own a part of by buying the ERC20 Whale for it, right? So he does monthly audits using non-fungible. So non-fungible do monthly audits on the, and release a PDF publicly to the growth of the vault, some statistics, and you can kind of see if you, if you scroll it up, let's quickly go through this. Um, let's go through the math, I like numbers. So 3,500 plus assets in the portfolio, um, $2 million, almost $2 million in total asset estimated net worth. So this is estimated. 35% um, increase over the last month. Total ETH value, almost 5,000. Um, if you scroll down, you can see recently added assets, $55,000. So out of that $2 million or 1.9, about $55,000, I believe, was newly added assets. 68 of them, so 2%. So um, we can minus that. So we'll say $1.85 million in appreciation uh, or, or current value and yeah, previous to that was 1.4 million. So it's had a solid $450,000 worth of growth in just valuation in terms of USD. And I, I wonder how much of that is attributed to Ethereum value also going up because it did go up, but it's pretty much the same now, $380 or something. So maybe not much, but you can see, and if you look down here, portfolio, portfolio, uh, portfolio valuation details, the strongest moving parts of the valuation were art. 27% from super rare, 55% uh, from maker's place. And I think, I think a big part of this was the Jose Del Bo pieces because he had a really big month last month. Um, Avastar as well at 36%, known origin, another art platform at 47%, uh, Terra Virtua is pretty small. So, um, you know, I'm not sure if you should take that into account, but yeah, 70% increase there, 50% for the joy pieces, $165,000 worth of value. Um, that's a lot of joy, a single artist pieces. Um, so yeah, I, the, the ones that I just mentioned, pretty much all of them were art platforms. Gods Unchained up 5%. In fact, I think this month we'll see a big increase in this because I've seen Gods Unchained be back on the move recently. Um, and I think, again, another theory of mine is that next year it's going to be a lot about the gaming side of NFTs and blockchain. Although we've seen a lot of art um, take the reins this year, it's probably because art platforms are pretty easy to set up relatively. Um, once you figure out the blockchain, you can almost copy paste the code and start selling, you know, start making your own art platform because they're just images that you are allowing people to tokenize or to add an NFT to, right? Not much work that goes into it relatively to building a game. So if you want to build a AAA game, there's so much to figure out. There's 
have to build a great game. It has to look visually appearing, appealing. There's a community to build, a community to satisfy. Um, you know, make sure that they are happy with the mechanics of the game, the investment opportunities of the game. There's so much to figure out with gaming. So it has taken maybe two to three years to find and evolve that gaming space. But I think next year and the year after, we, we are going to see these come to fruition. All right, so that's the end of this. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, this has been, this is, this, is, this is stuff over the weekend, so it's not just the last 24 hours. I will be making another video for the next 24 hours uh, tomorrow. So I'll catch you guys then.